Now, of course, to find transits, they're periodic, and we needed to find the periods for these variables. And I implemented a, a novel period sorting algorithm, what I'd like to call a uh, dynamic Bayesian brute force approach. And by brute force, I mean we took a number of trial periods. By Bayesian, let me explain what I mean by that. So I'm going to show you the animation here, and you can see the periods ticking by in the top. This happens to be an earlier type of newly discovered earlier type of the binary. The J band data is listed here in the top. There's nothing's co added here. This is the, the raw data. Um, and by Bayesian, I constructed a prior. How do we know when we found the right period for a star? Well, when we look at it, the curve looks roughly smooth and continuous, obviously, it's changing as it's entirely. So, but we construct a, a prior that's essentially just a smooth version of the data. You see how two, how self-similar the two are to one another. And this algorithm works really well. If we get to the right period for this eclipsing binary, these little jumping dots will go settle down. <coughs> And we know that we found the right period for the source. And this works equally well for transits, uh, as well as sinusoidal variables uh, over a wide range of periods. And of course, there are plenty of other excellent algorithms. We have the Fox VLS algorithm for transits and periodograms for sinusoidal variables. But this works equally well. well. So what about everything else? Uh, here's what I found. Um, 173 variables at high galactic latitudes and 73 at low galactic latitudes. Uh, I identified periods for 23 of those, uh, and 10 of those are eclipsing binaries. Uh, three of them are n-dwarf eclipsing binaries. Uh, two are spectroscopically confirmed spectral types. The third, the color, they're consistent with the n-dwarf. And of these three, two of the data are consistent with transiting Jovian companions. And in addition to that, from the ones I did not identify periods for, I have 25 additional candidate and type eclipsing systems, meaning that they exhibited at least one event that five sigma significance and um, did not identify a period for it, but they deserve to follow to see if there might be companions for it. What about the transit candidate? Here's uh, one of my transit candidates, and you'll notice that there are two plots that are related to the data. One of the plots is V shaped, and the other one is trapezoidal shaped. And that basically means that for these systems, unfortunately, we have color information. Uh, we cannot distinguish between two partially eclipsing systems of roughly equal mass and the transit scenario. And so you need radio velocity follow-up for that. But unfortunately, uh, my last one was earthquake down. Uh, so hopefully try again. And what am I going to do with everything else? Well, I'll be submitting soon after I return from this conference for publication in catalog. And uh, detailing the analysis that I found with this uh, uh, database, and produced a sample from uh, one of the plots showing the near infrared colors, and the black one, which is the contours from my sample, high black with latitude. And find periodic sources. You notice that the variables tend to lie below contour levels, so they're, they're the hot balls. <coughs> uh, in summary, I'd just like to mention that the two mass calibration database. Uh, offers an unprecedented opportunity to study the variability in the infrared sky that just hasn't been done before for such a large field and a large number of objects and a large number of observations. <coughs> I have two transit pants and radial velocity follow. Unfortunately, the concrete is not precise enough to discern between the two different scenarios, uh, the partial eclipsing system and the transit system. And uh, finally, uh, in my thesis, I have uh, preliminary constraints uh, from a Monte Carlo analysis to constrain the companion frequency of close in Jovian companions to Endor. And at this point, all I'm going to say is that uh, Endors are not likely to have more close in Jovian companions to solar type stars. Of course, that's consistent with what Endor law has found. But uh, I haven't submitted that yet, so I'm not going to say more about that. But maybe next year I can talk about it. Uh, just to uh, just, uh, give a little uh, plug for another part of my thesis, uh, looking at Endor FISC. Uh, we don't understand, there's a lot to learn yet about the dynamics of this and the formation of planets around low mass stars. And one of the points I made in my thesis is that stellar winds can be important uh, in the evolution and observability of these disks. And to conclude, uh, the thesis is available online for you guys to take a look at. Excuse me, some last things. Yeah, that's all I have. Thank you.